Good morning and welcome to Turkey Creek United Methodist Church and Gridley United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Ed Fleener, pastor of both of those churches. Today is Christ the King Sunday, as well as the Sunday before Thanksgiving. Christ the King Sunday is always the last Sunday before Advent starts, Advent being the Christian New Year. Now, it's an opportunity for us to remember who we have chosen to follow. Also, it's an opportunity to give thanks for God's saving grace and God who has given us the gift of the church where we can celebrate the fellowship of the body of Christ each time we gather, whether it be in person or online. And Thanksgiving is also a time to celebrate the abundance of God. We are overwhelmed with gratitude for everything that God provides. Although there are enough resources for everyone in the world to be able to live fully, safely, we face the problem of distribution, of sharing, of helping out those less fortunate. So how do we give thanks when there are so many who don't have enough? How do we celebrate the abundance of God while acknowledging the selfishness or the inequality of the human community? These are some things that we will be talking about today. Let us pray. O oh God, you are our shepherd. Your steadfast love is present when, whenever and wherever we are. And your love resides within each of us. But sometimes it's so very hard to open ourselves up to your love. We feel like scattered sheep, frightened and alone. Help us to know your loving presence as we live as your gathered community. Brighten our hearts so that we can know the hope to which we have been called. Amen. Though there are dark clouds over us right now and the COVID virus going on, it seems like it's attacking us from all sides. God will seek us out and God will protect us. God brings us to the safe shelter of God's compassion. When we feel lost and alone, wondering who will save us, God reaches out in love. God heals our wounds and transforms our lives. We thank God who loves us so much and we praise God who searches for us and brings us home. Let us pray. O oh God of love, you created us to love one another as well as to love you. We confess that sometimes we have limited that word, that love to words rather than making that love real by our actions. We fail to recognize Christ and Christ in the hungry, thirsty, homeless, and the sick. Too often we've turned away from your presence as we fail to share what we have with our brother and sister who might be in need. Forgive us. Turn our hearts and guide us to follow your ways. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. God is good to all and has compassion for all creation. Being a ruler of sheep probably doesn't sound like a kingly duty. But that truly is the servant call that Christ has accepted in our lives and in our world. And we need to hear those words and we need to act out those words as well. Today's scriptures remind us that caring selflessly is the work of Christ our King and also the work to which we have been called. To be those who claim the name Christian is to follow our servant master and become servants to all 
who might be in need. Also to see and to respond to those needs. These are the masks of a Christian follower. And we need to care for others. We need to open our eyes and see the needs that surround us each and every day. In today's Old Testament from Ezekiel chapter 34, the term shepherd is used to refer both to the political and the religious leaders of Judah. And the main point of the chapter is that God's promise is to raise up a ruler of the Israelite nation from the line of David and that there would be a covenant of peace that would be established through David because of God's rule. Ezekiel 34, starting with verse 11. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek, shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the water courses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture of the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and will strengthen the weak. And continuing on with verse 20. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set, the, set over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. And today's reading from Psalm 100 reminds us that God is our creator and we must praise and give thanks to God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Our New Testament reading from Ephesians is a prayer for spiritual insight, for wisdom, and revelation within the newly created Christian community in Ephesus. Ephesus 1, verses 15 through 23. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks to you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope 
to which he has called you? What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power? God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church. The church is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. And our gospel reading from Matthew 25 reveals that the disciples must prepare themselves for the second coming of Christ no matter when that might be, by doing good to all people who are in need. The disciples eventually come to realize that as people, they have treated those who were in need, they have actually treated Christ. Our gospel reading is from Matthew 25, verses 31 through 40. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, just as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a, a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you in, sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. <clears throat> Dear Lord, may the words of my mouth in the meditations of all of our hearts, be pleasing and acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Do you remember where you were and more specifically, what happened exactly 57 years ago today? November 22nd, 1963, was the day that President John F. Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas, Texas. I was in my classroom in Louisville, Kentucky, and I honestly didn't realize the significance of a president's death. I guess I was really more interested that we got out of school early that day. But it turns out that there were a couple of other prominent men who also died November 22, 1963. Aldous Huxley, the British writer and philosopher who wrote Brave New World, and then also C.S. Lewis, who was also a British writer and a lay theologian who wrote The Chronicles of Narnia, The Screwtape Letters, and Mere Christianity, among many other works. And some quotes from C.S. Lewis 
that I think are really telling. I believe in Christianity as I believe that the sun has risen, not only because I see it, but because by it, I see everything else. Another one of his quotes is, we are what we believe we are. And then this one, true humility is not thinking less of yourself. It is thinking of yourself less. That last quote leads directly to what today is on the Christian calendar. Again, Christ the King Sunday, where we recognize the servant kingship of Christ our Lord. Christ thought of others before thinking of himself. And I think that a quote that John F. Kennedy also made during his inaugural address also shows how we need to be thinking of others rather than just ourselves. Kennedy said, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Now, that plays out in that Christ's humility was shown in many ways. Christ wasn't born in a palace like you might expect a king to be born in. He was born in a stable. He rode a donkey, not a war stallion. His throne was a cross, and his crown was made of thorns. His riches were the poor, and his army was a ragtag bunch of nobodies. Today is Christ the King Sunday. It is an opportunity that sometimes we need to be reminded who we have chosen to follow. The invitation is about finding new ways to be thankful for what we have been given. And we express our gratitude by giving, by serving, and loving. Now, today is also the last Sunday of the Christian year. So today really is the fulfillment of everything that's gone before us. It's a reminder of Christ who we follow and the gratitude for all that we have done together, even in this difficult year that we've gone through. We need to celebrate as we give thanks for God's goodness and for our place in the body of Christ, because this is Christ in his glory. We need to be thankful for those who serve the least of these. Think of the food pantries that we at both Gridley and Turkey Creek support that give hands-on help to those who might be in need. We need to be thankful for all the people in the medical professions who work on everyone, even those who may not have the ability to pay. We need to recognize and honor those who organize food and other product drives and the distribution to those who are unable to provide for themselves. We need to express our gratitude to God by giving, serving, and loving all of God's children. Remember when Jesus was asked what the greatest commandment was? He didn't limit it to just one. He gave us two. Love God and love neighbor. And really, Jesus says you can't separate them. You can't love God and not love your neighbor. It just doesn't work out that way. You have to share any grace and any gifts that you might have received. So what kind of king is Jesus? Jesus is a king who seeks us out wherever we are, no matter what our circumstances are. Jesus is a king who provides for our needs. Jesus is a king who corrects us and guides us along the path that we need to follow. 
And again, Jesus is a shepherd king who seeks us, leads us, feeds us so that we can prosper. It's up to us to decide what kind of sheep, what kind of citizens of God's kingdom we will be. Noted theologian William Barclay stated that the sheep that Jesus talks about didn't even realize they were being helpful to the world around them. They were helping people because they couldn't stop themselves. Christ's love in their hearts compelled them to compassionate action. It was the natural and instinctive reaction of a loving heart. It was honest generosity. They were thankful for what Christ had given to them. I want to give two specific examples of people who showed Christ's love and the servant's heart. Specifically talking about St. Francis of Assisi and also St. Martin of Tours. Francis became St. Francis of Assisi because he prayed a single prayer over and over as he knelt before a crucifix in the small crumbling church in San Damiano. He said, Most high glorious God, enlighten the darkness of my heart and give me, Lord, correct faith, firm hope, perfect charity, wisdom and perception, so that I may do what is truly your most holy will. We all need enlightenment and wisdom. And Francis's dream in this prayer was that he might not just know, but actually do God's holy will. The second example is Martin of Tours. Martin was a Roman soldier who converted to Christianity. It's said that on a bitterly cold winter day, Martin, the soldier, entered a city and was approached by a beggar pleading for assistance. Now, Martin didn't have any money at that time, so he took off his coat, cut it in two, and gave half of it to the beggar. And that night, Martin had a vision that he had died and gone to heaven. There he saw Jesus, and on the back of Christ was half of a Roman soldier's coat. An angel asked Christ, Master, why are you wearing that battered old coat? And Jesus answered, my servant Martin gave it to me. As part of our thankfulness for Christ's kingship, we are called to action as an extension of our love. Remember, Jesus said, what you do for and to the least of these, sick, hungry, homeless, oppressed, imprisoned, you do for me. Love God and love your neighbor and be thankful for God's and Christ's kingship. Amen and amen. Now we have the opportunity to be able to share joys and concerns. I've had several people reach out to me expressing joys and also concerns that they would like to be passed on. Again, I know of many, but I know that there are many that I'm not aware of, people that might be sick or suffering. So please let me know if there are others that need to be mentioned. 
First of all, Charlotte and I would like to thank everyone for their calls and texts regarding her brother Joel's passing. Others that I'm aware of needing our prayers and support, Rick Evans. Rick Evans has moved to a rehab facility in Wichita. And Rick's wife, Linda, says that the rehab facility in Wellington, Kansas, where her parents live, her parents being Helen and Eugene Sawyer, that rehab facility has a major COVID-19 outbreak. 30 of the 39 residents, in addition to four staff members, have tested positive for the virus. She's thankful that her parents have escaped the virus so far, but between worrying about her parents and Rick, um, that's a lot for Linda to, to deal with right now. Angie Morris, who is Elaine Morris's daughter, we need to keep her in our prayers. Dale Lanham is in St. Luke's Can in Kansas City with COVID. Vicki Lanham, uh, Dale's wife, is at home, but she's also suffering from COVID. Jeannie Haas, home with COVID. Joanne and Kenny Warmly, also COVID. Ed Kimball is in a swing bed at Coffee County Hospital. And Doyle Springs, who was Cece Thompson's first husband and the father of her sons, is in an Oklahoma City hospital with COVID. He's been intubated in very, very critical condition. So we need to keep all of those people in our prayers. And Joyce, we would like to welcome Hannah Johnson to the world. Hannah is the daughter of Jennifer and Jason Johnson. Jason is the pastor at Gridley Christian Church. Hannah was born on November 16th. As I say, I know that there are others that we need to keep in our prayers. Please let me know so that I can add them to the list. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we thank you and we praise you for everything that you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the world, the beauty of the world, for the wonder of life and the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends and the loving care that surrounds us wherever we are. We thank you for helping us to do our best at all things that we might do. But we also thank you for any disappointments and failures that we might incur that lead us to recognize that we depend on you alone. And above all, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, our earthly and yet heavenly king, for the truth of his word in the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation. Grant us the gift of your spirit so that we may give thanks to you in all things. These things we ask in your son's name as we pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread as we forgive our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, we are not only the shepherd, I'm sorry, we are not only the sheep, but we are also the shepherd when we help others. In the same way, we're giver and receiver. Just as we have received, 
may we generously give to our churches, to any food pantries, clothing pantries, anything such as that in your local communities. Please give as you are able so that we can help God's children as we pray this blessing. Dear God, you have given us all that we have and all that we are. Through these gifts and in our lives, help us to be the shepherds and healers and lovers of your children that you are calling us to be. Amen. While we normally worship in sanctuaries, worship God in sanctuaries, and also in beautiful holy places, Christ has told us that if we want to find him in this world, we will seek out the least, the lost of Christ's brothers and sisters. Help us go out today with eyes wide open so that we can see Christ in the world and that we may know God's love by loving one another. May we love not just in word and speech, but in truth and action. Be blessed and be a blessing to all and always give thanks to God. Have a blessed Thanksgiving week and please stay safe. Amen and amen.